All right, well today we are back to work on upgrading and outfitting my 30 by 50 home workshop here with our loft build mini series. This has been such an enjoyable project because this is something that we have been planning to do since the very beginning of putting this building up. This was always in the cards and we're kind of reaching the final form of the building even though it's been almost two years. It was all in set up and intended around having this so to finally see them coming together it's uh it's a nice feeling you know as we've been in here things have changed things that we didn't plan on doing we've done and things that we thought we would want to do we haven't done because we haven't needed them you've got to use the space to really see what works and what doesn't and what you need and what you don't but <laughs> the need for lofts has never changed we've needed them from the start and they're finally there we've got the structures done so we built and assembled the frames, we got the stairs up, we got the flooring done, we then added another layer of flooring to strengthen it up a bit. We also got our aesthetic flooring done with carpet on this side, carpet tiles, and then paint on this side. So basically the structures are complete and ready to be used. So we, we've had the floor space now for you know a week or so, but now it's time to actually use that floor space and start setting things up up here. So that's why we went ahead and got these shelves mocked up up here just to get an idea of how much space we actually have to work with, how we can lay everything out to be the most efficient. That's what this is all about. You know, we couldn't go much larger on the shop footprint when we built this building. So instead we decided to go taller and get that storage vertically. So it's all about efficiency, maximizing efficiency, which personally, as much as I obviously, I would love to have a way larger shop where we'll never run out of space. I do enjoy trying to maximize efficiency. No wasted space. That's, I don't know, I get a kick out of it. So. For me, this is right up my alley. So that being said, we are diving into setting up and outfitting the lofts, which as I've said in other parts of this series is the part I've been the most excited about because we get to see kind of the final form, not to mention outfitting the lofts is not, they're not just an independent thing where we've got stuff that didn't exist and is gonna go up there. You know, there's a lot of things that are down here that are gonna go up there and then things down here are gonna get moved around. New things are gonna come in down here in different places. Everything is gonna change. We're basically flipping the shop on its head and there's not going to be much that's the same as it was before when we're done with this, which is good. It's needed because we were bursting at the seams before. And if there's one thing that I can't stand, it is clutter. And the idea is to set this up in a way where we not only have a space for everything that we have currently, but we have room for you know anything we could realistically add in the future. So that is why I'm so looking forward to getting this final kind of steps of this process done. So that being said, that's what we're working on. I'm gonna go ahead and finish up one of our projects, which is wiring up our lights. I ran out of wire to attach this one to this one, so I need to do that, get these wires nicely secured like the other side, and then we need to start running conduit, setting up our switches, run our conduit up to a box, we need to run our outlets up for the lofts. We've got a bit to do in the electrical department. I'd like to get it done before we move anything back underneath the lofts because obviously make our lives a little bit easier. So I, I'm gonna get straight into it. Let's get to work. So when it comes to getting these lights finished up, for me, it's more than just the order of operations aspect where it's gonna be way easier to do this when we don't have a bunch of stuff in the way, but it's also the fact that having these lights done will mean that we'll have lights for when we're putting that stuff in that's gonna inevitably go in the way. So the first thing I had to finish up was just tying them all together and getting these cables secured. I thought about going the extra mile and bending conduit to connect each one, but I thought that's probably a little silly. And honestly, it looks, I think it looks good like this. I think it looks solid having them all secured nice and straight. No, no complaints. So before we got into running the conduit, me and Josue went up to try to move these shelves around in a bunch of different positions to see what we thought was gonna work best for space and efficiency because where these shelves end up is gonna kinda of determine where we end up putting the outlets up here. So it's something we kinda of need to have an idea on beforehand before we commit to uh, the wiring aspect. Wait for it. Oh, hey, technical difficulties. I was going to say, I'm like, yeah, that's plenty bright. 
So we went ahead and temporarily wired up the lights just so we would have some light to use while we're working under here. And then it was time to dive into this first box. Now, this box is a junction for a lot of other routes of wires, so it's got a lot of wires in it. And it's probably going to be the most difficult part to deal with of this whole process. The rest of it is all stuff we're adding new. So we had a plan on how we were going to do this conduit with the T and all that. And it's just a matter of measuring it out and starting to cut the conduit and see how it all pans out. If it all pans out. Now, I thought this first piece was going to be simple, but it's not. All right, let's see. Put it in. If my 56 inches was correct. Why is it too long? <laughs> Oh yeah, this is easy. Oh, we got a slight problem though. I don't think I'll do that. We need like a slight dog. We could try to slight jog it, you know, we got a little room. I initially thought this piece wasn't going to need any bend, so it'd be the easy starter piece, but unfortunately it needs a little bit of a jog just to extend it off the wall so that way the T matches to where we need it to go into the frame. So. We got a rough jog in there. I would say it's not uh, not the best work, but uh, it's there. It's doing its job. It's got the T where we need it. So now we can start working on the route up to the light. Now, since we've got to have these back-to-back -back 90s, we decided to use this 90 coupling on one side and then an actual bent 90 on the other side because the bend radius is six inches. So that means you need six inches of room to make that bend, which we did not have 12 inches to make the two bends. But as much as I don't love the look of the 90 coupling especially next to a nice smooth radius bend it works it's it pretty much gets us the exact right length that we need I ain't going no. <laughs> with our route up to the light done it's time to start working on the next more complicated route but in the meantime i've got to make this uh this first piece bend a little better this is a piece you see it's at eye level and it just it wasn't quite right so we modified it a little bit got it fitting perfect and now it's time to work on the next piece which is actually probably the most complicated one by far because it needs to jog back up against the wall and then do a 90 at pretty much the exact right spot to get the outlets at the height that we want them so very very critical bends and measurements and uh it's not perfect uh, off the bat and as you try to go back and correct these bends and add a little bit more you as you bend one you unbend the other and you just start chasing your tail so we got it to a point where i thought maybe we could make it work had another bend but we just weren't happy with it and at the end of the day we had enough conduit we decided to start over and uh, try to make sure this one went right. The other thing here that is absolutely critical is making sure your bends when you're doing these jogs are on the exact same plane because if they're not, then it gets all sorts of cattywampus. So we got our jog in nice and clean on the same plane. We could get our 90 in. We already know what length to cut it to. And then we've got a piece we can actually work with. All right, well, our conduit install is actually going pretty well. I'm, uh, I'm pretty happy with it. I wanted to do this you know, anytime I've installed electrical stuff, but I've always put it off because it's one project at a time. But since we're doing multiple projects, I thought now is the time and it's looking uh, pretty decent so far. I would have liked to use a true 90 here, but there just wasn't enough. Ah, there might've been just enough space to do it. But anyway, it has to kick out a little bit there and then that way it can meet here and be, you know, inside the frame. And then it kicks back to the wall there and then turns and goes 90. So. We need to mock up an electrical box up there so I can get my cut length so I can cut it, install that box bracket, and then we need one more piece to the next box, then we can move on to the other side. I went and got some new boxes because the other ones weren't gonna work. Decided to get these short handy boxes because the boxes are such a nuisance for us when setting things up in the shop than being super thick. So hoping these will work out a little bit better. So yeah, we got our conduit in, out. Just need to mock this up so we can cut that one, cut it, clamp it. Next one. Let's get to it. All right. 
next piece. One of my goals, one of my things I was trying to accomplish while doing this conduit was to avoid using any unions. You know, this run, for example, is pretty long, but it's still short enough to fit in a stick so we don't have to cut it. But doing that means trying to work this whole giant piece for this little jog around this uh, airline. And it wasn't working. I started chasing my tail, trying to get the bends just right. And then to do that, you kind of got to bend them more. And I completely messed it up. So we're starting again. And to avoid wasting another whole piece, since we don't have another whole piece, I had to cave and accept uh, we're going to need some unions. This should work, though. That's all I really needed. Well, it depends. Might cut it here. Just have to union it here and here. After accepting my unioning <laughs> fate, which admittedly did make it way easier because then you just have your bend section and then from there, from our bend around this airline, it's just two straight pieces. That's all we gotta cut. So uh, it makes it a lot simpler. And once we accepted that, it went together pretty quickly, honestly. Beautiful. I'm gonna put a bend, didn't even need a dang bend. <laughs> it looks decorative though. Yeah, it was on purpose. Look at that. Yeah, made it to the end. Once we had our conduit and box mounting done on the first loft, it's time to move on to the second loft. Now this one's kind of much of the same, but it's also a little bit different. There's more going on, a lot more, in this electrical box because it's a junction for a lot of stuff. And it, it, we're in a different location on the loft because the lofts are different sizes. So we've got the conduit coming up from the inside, which makes our bins a little bit more complicated. But on the top side, everything's a little bit simpler because we're only, we only really need one outlet on this loft because it's more of a storage loft. So starting with our first piece again, thinking it's gonna be simple again. <laughs> and uh, of course it needs a good three bins to get it exactly how we want it because we've gotta work our way around the brackets for the conduit that's already there to get our T in a nice spot tucked up against the leg. But you know, we're getting there. We're getting there on the feel for the bender and how well this conduit bends. And we, we got the bend, we got it where we needed. So now it's time for probably what's gonna take the cake as the most complicated bend of this project. And that is going up underneath for the lights because we have basically three 90 degree bends that we need to do back to back to back. And they all have to pan out to be the right length to get it where it needs to be. Otherwise it's gonna be off center or it's not gonna reach the roof or a number of things. So we took the easy way out kind of, I'll be honest. We, we kind of took the easy way of leaving everything a little bit long when we cut our initial piece before we bent it. So that way we could just trim the legs to shape as we mocked it up and confirmed our measurements. That way we're not compiling a list of measurements and trying to hope that we're not a little bit off as we go down the line. So we got our first 90 90 to 90 back and then we're able to use basically what's the scrap piece from that piece that I bent wrong where it went up onto the other loft. So, you know, we're making use of the excess. It wasn't a total waste having to start over on that piece. Uh, we, you know, we were able to, it was able to be used somewhere else, just in a simpler form. <laughs> yeah, it looks nice though. That box is like how it should be. And then... So our last piece of conduit for this side and for the whole project also should have been a simple straight piece, but since we did the jog on the bottom piece to make it fit a little bit nicer, we've got to do a nice little reverse jog on this one to get it back to the center of the beam so the box is in the right spot. <laughs> Beautiful work. Look at that. Top notch work. Who knew? We were electricians too. Add it to the badge list. We got a new badge. I couldn't we couldn't call ourselves that until we bent conduit, but might have wasted a little bit. But honestly, we had we were gonna have just enough without me messing up that piece, and we still had just enough. So those two pieces, I guess. Regardless, we had enough. We got it done. All the conduit we intended to do for now is bent, shaped, attached, 
installed. That ain't going nowhere. Nah. <laughs> Got our run down there. Real happy with all of it, honestly. I'm, I'm very, <laughs> very pleased with all, how all of the conduit came out. That's uh, definitely better than I could have hoped for our first time doing conduit. Granted, it's not our first time bending tubes, and it's kind of just hand bending tubes, but still satisfying. So anyway, now it's time. Now that we got all the conduit done to start running the wires. I got 500 feet, solid core, 12 gauge, which 12 gauge is more than we need for each outlet. But anyway, we got 12 gauge, white, black, red. First things first, uh, let's wait, you, you do the honors. I got a razor knife right here for you, dude. Oh, there it is. Oh, I, the, the precision one, this Dangerous. is precision. I don't know if I can handle it. Do you, not, do you not do precision work? I would have thought so. Oh my God. Wow, you just broke the no, spool. This wire is supposed to last me a lifetime. I'm saying this is a long point. I'll be here for a while. Gotta keep going coming. All right, anyway, we're gonna get these wires on. Oh, you, of course you get that one fast. You missed it. Yeah, Michael, figured it out. Out. I saw, I caught it. So we've got our little wire holding contraption so the spools can spool freely because we're gonna be pulling through, you know, three wires at a time. So yeah, we'll pull from, anyway, we're gonna get set up and try to pull some wires through and see what it's like. All right, well, we got all our wires routed for this side. We got our wires going up to our outlets up there. We got our wires down here going up to our light box up there. So basically, we just need to cut this one way shorter. It's got a very short run. It needs to go into that box, get secured, and then tie into these wires, plate on, done. That's done up there. Uh, down here, we've got a wire in the switch and the outlet. And then up here, this part actually went way easier than I was expecting it to. So the nice thing about the solid wire is it, it is harder to get around bends because it's not as flexible, but it doesn't bunch up when you hit resistance. So we got the wiring up here real, real easy. So we got our extra. I always go a little overboard with the extra just because you know, we can always cut it shorter, can't put more in. So we basically got to wire up the outlets in that box, that box, the light, and then down at the bottom, put our switch and our outlet in there, and we are done with this side, hopefully. Assuming we do it all right, <laughs> that is. Um, yeah, really happy though with the conduit, and you know, these, these 90s were particularly challenging, getting that one and that one with the solid wire, but that's why people would normally run two conduits for this, you would run the one going up, you know, with soft bends, and then the one going to those lights with a soft bend as well. Even if we didn't have that hard bend, we still have the hard bend there. But I didn't want to deal with two conduits, and especially because it's three quarter, we only had one three quarter knockout anyway. I think this was the cleanest way we could do it, for sure. A little more challenging on the routing, but simpler overall. So anyway, I'm Jibber Jabber and I'm happy. <laughs> uh, this has been, you know, not, not that I've been dreading this, but I knew, you know, it was gonna take a lot of forethought, a lot of work, and planning and plotting. And, you know, I knew I wasn't going to be happy unless we got it real close to spot on with all the bends and stuff. So I'm happy to see it, you know, put together. So I should probably quit jibber jabbering. We should get to work. I'm going to start from the top and just work my way down. The last box will be doing this one with the switch and everything. Get these outlets tossed in and get this wrapped up. Let's get to it. I got to work on trying to prep my outlets and covers and things as much as I could before going up there and starting to tear into it. So that way we had everything that we need. The uh, utility storage loft is getting the hand-me-down outlets and cover, and the hangout loft is getting the new outlets and the new covers. You know, just, you know, we got, we got, we got the extras. Might as well hand me down them to the, uh, or hand me up them <laughs> to the storage loft. So basically these outlets are meant to be used in a couple different kinds of boxes. So they have these break off tabs, but, uh, they don't break off very easy. We had to try a few different methods to chop these things off, get them out of the way so they'd fit in our box. But with that done, we could just start wiring them up. Now, there's a couple of ways you can do this. When you have two outlets side by side, but you're sharing the same power source for those two pairs of outlets, and the way we decided to do it, because we're using these shallow boxes to you know, not intrude too much on our space, is to tie the two together. So instead of 
putting a wire nut on one of the wires and then splitting that wire to two wires, one to each outlet, we're going into the one outlet and then out of the one outlet into the next outlet. Now the only downside with doing it this way is that if we have a failure with the first outlet, which you know is pretty, I don't know if I've ever had an outlet just outright stop working and not cause any other problem, but if we did, if that did happen in this theoretical world, there's a chance that the second outlet would stop working. But my logic on it was that I would want to know if that first outlet wasn't working and I would just change it. So I thought saving the space in the box and keeping it from being just jam-packed with wires and wire nuts, which I'm not a fan of, was the way to do it. Not to mention, uh, to avoid using wire nuts, I used these push connectors that I really like. And for the ground side, they worked out beautifully because they're a lot thinner. So I'm able to tuck it in there and keep that wiring really nice and clean in there, which makes it easier for putting it back together and not being nervous about having a bunch of wires jam packed on top of each other. From doing car wiring to this, it is such a weird massive difference in the way you do things you know you would never cram a bunch of wires in a metal box on in a car because there is vibration and they're going to eventually short through and you're going to have problems so it's it's a weird perspective to take and i have to try to toe that line of this is the way it's done in house stuff and this is the way it's done in car stuff you know there's I think there's things that I can do differently that are a little bit extra and probably not needed for it in this environment, but you know, will make me feel better. Will give me some more peace of mind. And uh, I don't know. I don't know. Maybe that's just me, but I want to make it nice. All right. Well, our outlets are hopefully done. <laughs> we've got our our light switch here, outlet, and we've got those outlets up there. So now it's time to moment of truth, kick the tires, light the fires. Oh, hopefully not light the fires. Uh, flip the breaker and just see what happens. Nothing, nothing bad, at least. No fires, no breaker pops. All right, now the real moment of truth. Let's see if the switch works. Boom, look at that. We got lights. So satisfying to see these on without this cord dangling <laughs> down all in your way. Oh, so satisfying. Oh, I love it. I love it. Box there with the conduit, boom, down there, boom, boom. Uh, so now we need to see, let's see if our outlet's got power. Oh, jeez. These are tight. Ugh. Yep, that one does. Yeah, that means this one should too, yep. Let's test the ones up top. Why is it so tight? Yep, yep. So far, so good. Four out of four. Check the last ones. Boom, 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 boom. We have power. Well, this is what it looks like complete. Conduit, outlet, outlet. I only did the four box. We really, I was intending on doing two and two or maybe two and four, but we had to do the four boxes because of the conduit, just having enough room for the conduit bulkhead to go in and all that. Instead of using, say, one of these to a, a surge protector with six spots on it, we just have four spots there. So, yeah, I'm whew, I'm real pleased with that. Now I just gotta knock out the other side real quick. <laughs> Hopefully real quick, it shouldn't be too bad. The worst part's gonna be the same thing, that bottom box. That one's simpler because it's just it's regular 90s, so it should just flow up there nice, and then the other one's literally just straight up. <laughs> one of the things I'm glad about as far as the fact that we did real conduit instead of flexible conduit, or you know, you can get the wiring where it has the wires in it and the flexible conduit around it, which is how I've always done it because I'm wiring one thing at a time, a lift or some lights or something like that. Uh, but that's just not as satisfying. You can't clamp it as nice and there's no room for expansion with this conduit It's pretty easy to shove the wires up there aside from getting through that T for example But other than that, it's really not bad So if we wanted to run another set of wires and junction them off this box to go to something else We can we have that option now so just the idea of future proofing it a little bit where we're not doing the same amount of work one time or now we've got a route of you know flexible metal conduit and then we need to run something else to a similar area and now you got two routes and it just looks goofy it's just it's nice to have that option knowing that down the road if we want to add anything or change anything we can so we got the wires routed. Uh, Sway so was working on the top box outlets and I was working on the bottom box, getting the outlet and the switch in and getting all that done and dusted. Oh, and that's truth. 
Number two. No fire. Not electrocuted and Ah, let's go. Let there be light. Let there be light. Now we have both sides on without a cord dangling in the air. Oh yeah, that looks so good. Oh, it's like the shop's finally back to, you know, back to equal lighting. <laughs> Before it was so dark under there, you know. Standing back here, they're, I can't see them at all. They're not blinding you from outside. That is the one thing I hate with lighting is if you have one where if you look over there, it's, you know, it's in your eyes. Wow. Now I kind of want to, if there's some way you could figure out like flexible conduit to add lights under each of the lift platforms, that'd be pretty cool. But this does light them up a bit. I mean, especially over here compared to before, you couldn't see anything. Look at that. We got light. We got all our power back. Anyway, I'm jibber jabber and wiring is done. We got outlets. Josue used the outlet up there for the vacuum, right? Yeah, I did. It worked? Hopefully. Yep. Wow. Wow. So we got power. We got lights. We got power. Got lights. Got switches. Here, let's, let's test it out. Yes, yeah, so that is what it looked like before. <laughs> all dark and dungeony under there. Which obviously, if we're not working out of there, you know, who cares, but. Exactly. It's nice to have the option. I thought about wiring them into this half of the lights, because these only draw like 0.87 amps each. So we could have wired them in with these, the second half of the lights, and then had them all in one switch, but I thought it'd be cool to have the option. Nice, dude. Mostly finished up the outlet up there while I was working on the one down here. You still gotta check. You gotta check out. Oh yeah, we gotta test both of them. Test them out. Do the honors. Where's the? It's right there, Jose. Right test them out. Test them out. They're kind of hard. To... Yeah, you gotta really ramrod it in there. Slip. Yup. Slip. Boom. All right, I'll run you up so you can check that top top one. <laughs> These should go in easier. White. Light. Lit. Light. Nice. Boom! I did it! <laughs> you did it! Good job, Osle. Satisfying, right? It is crazy how simple uh, like shop wiring is, shop or house wiring compared to car wiring. You know, there's like car wiring, there's so many variables. Done. Flip the switch, flip it one time. How's it feel? Solid. Yeah. All right, it's time. I said it was time and we spent all the time doing wiring. We're gonna start installing furniture and stuff up on the, the hangout loft. So we got our seating situation, which I debated for a while and nailed down those. And then we got a little table and we're still determining what else we're gonna put up there because it kind of depends on what changes down here. First things first though, I want, I want to see what these things look like. Assemble, we can always move them out of the way to get the rest of the stuff up there. One thing that has been bugging me since we built these lofts is these lights being right up in your face. They're hot, they're bright, so we're gonna raise them a little bit and see if or how much that helps. All right, well, we got our lights uh, tucked up a little bit, been needing to do that. It's about as high as they can go. They're still a little in your face. You may have to address it at some point, but for now it's fine. I mean, you know, I say that, but it's only if I look at them. Uh, so we have, I, my plan originally was to buy some cheap marketplace love seat or something, because it's a long story. If you've watched the videos for a long time, the old Orlando house, we had a roommate leave and instead of having to deal with getting, you know, a fourth roommate again, I paid more to rent the room. So I set up like an office with the sim rig, we built the sim rig, budget as possible. And we found this like love seat off 
marketplace for like 20 bucks, but instead I went the easy way out so I didn't have to deal with talking to and meeting people on marketplace and I ordered some chairs on Amazon. Now I ended up with chairs, but that's because we ever set this up to be like a podcast area. It's kind of my idea, or at least my justification. Oh yeah. Oh, they're like pretty much fully assembled. Yeah, <laughs> pretty much fully assembled. Nice. Oh, oh Ron! <laughs> this was just like exactly like the pictures. <laughs> they literally are assembled. Literally completely assembled. Awesome. Are you pulled up or not? That works. Okay. The amount of appreciation I have for things that come assembled is <laughs> <laughs> so high. I was just I was so curious on how these would learn to show up. Alright, let's get them roughly in the spot here. That's pretty solid. That's a stable thing, yeah. Part of the reason for these was the size. I thought about getting us like, started with two recliners that got some massaging built in that were cheap and simple. Then the, the Mac Daddy ones were like a full big recliner, but they have massaging in the leg. But then I saw these and I'm like, I feel like that's better suited, it's better size. The swivel, I like the swivel. And then if we're ever doing a podcast, like a good podcast chair. Yeah, yeah. So how did you get interested in wildlife photography? Photography. Oh. <laughs> All right, uh, next one, next item. I thought about buying this for a long time. And then I saw it when I was looking for something different. I was like, that's perfect. A little miniature shipping container. Oh, wow. <laughs> And it should be like an actual cabinet. Oh yeah. Ha! That's pretty cool. I didn't think it was gonna actually be like the container. It does that. And we got some storage. Neat. That's pretty neat. I think these especially when are broken in will be real comfy. And then we got a coffee table here. Put your feet up. This is comfy. I'm just gonna stay here. Definitely for like a podcast, I'd have to change the lighting up some. It's like too too harsh of lighting. You'd have to have some like accent, like corner lighting type of thing. Oh yeah. I mean the brown leather and the gray, I should have done the gray leather in hindsight maybe. There's like a gray leather. I mean the brown looks cool. But it'll make more sense once we're done. Cause I mean this wall, we're gonna put stuff on this wall. And this is the studious gentleman's environment area. Probably have a little lamp right there. Got our outlets right there. Boom. So satisfying. Do it. Yeah. Go ahead and flip the back row off this way. Oh yeah. So like we had some nice lamps up there, some some accent lighting instead, and then you could have these lights on still and the under under lights on. Then you still got the shop lit up, but then less harsh lighting up there. That looks pretty cool too. You wanna flip the other switch off? The next one, yeah. Oh wow. Wow, nice. All right, well, uh, I wanted to go ahead and start putting the rest of the stuff up on this loft, and we've gotta start basically stripping things off of this shelf. We're gonna modify this shelf, and use those shelves to make that shelf have more shelves and <laughs> take stuff from there, put it up there. We've got to take stuff from the container, put it in here, stuff from in here, in the garage. Stuff's got to get shuffled and shifted everywhere. And again, we got to keep setting that area up. But we're still up in the air on how much of the stuff down here we're going to use. I've got some more stuff for down here on the way. We've got quite a few things up in the air. But before I start blocking myself in up there by putting the rest of the furniture up, we need to build that bridge across the back. That is... I meant to do it during this one, but I got too sucked into doing the wiring and then, you know, rabbit hole. We rabbit holed a little bit on the wiring, but I'm glad we did because I'm very, very pleased with how it turned out. 
very satisfying project for sure. So was worth it, but we didn't quite get to the bridge. Not to mention this table is going to replace that table. That table is gonna go finally. I said I was gonna get rid of it when we moved into this building because it came with the old shop. I put an MDF top on it. It's just always bothering me. It's a bunch of mismatched wood. It's silly, but point is we're gonna replace that table with this table, a little bit bigger, a little bit deeper, and then build a little bit smaller out of steel table for this one's purpose. And we've got other some other stuff to build for storage over here. We've got things to build. Bridge built, table built, and start putting everything back together and shuffling things around. That's really all that's left. Been a bit of a saga, but we have two functioning lofts. Oh, and we gotta put install the AC. I need to get that ordered. Uh, yeah, that's about all I've got. Anything you wanna add, Josue? Anyway, I'm Jibber Jabbering. I'm gonna keep Jibber Jabbering because I like talking to you guys. I don't stop, so. Uh, thank you guys for watching. Thanks for subscribing. Thanks for all your support on the Loft Build Series. Uh, we've been having a blast with it and I cannot wait to see it all done and the shop fully put back together. But we still got a little more work to do. So I'll see you guys for that. For now, that's it. So thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. I probably said this already. Goodbye.